can you hear me? Yeah, I didn't hear. All right. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for the great introduction. Uh, super excited to see everyone here and uh, uh, really excited to dive into uh, what we do at Patronus and especially uh, what we've done uh, across the open source community in the context of uh, especially automated evaluation uh, and LLM judges. Uh, so Patronus, we're focused on uh, helping companies be able to do uh, systematic uh, AI evaluation and optimization. And to do that uh, in a much more rigorous and quantitative way, especially to help companies that are really looking to be able to uh, catch and prevent different kinds of uh, challenging LLM system failures, like uh, hallucinations and rag systems, uh, unexpected behavior with uh, agent directories and, and things like that. Um, and we have a strong AI research first approach and an open source approach to how we've solved that problem. Uh, my background is primarily in ML interoperability and explainability, and I help lead a lot of the early uh, machine learning efforts related to that at Meta uh, and the AI research, AI research group, along with uh, other folks across Patronus who uh, have come from similar kinds of uh, research backgrounds. And so today, our product is used by uh, leading technology companies and enterprises uh, like uh, AngelList, Etsy, HP, Pearson, uh, and a variety of others. Uh, and so excited to, to dive in and, and share more about uh, what we've done and also what we've learned um, uh, in, in terms of automated evaluation. So one of the big things that uh, we continue to hear over and over again is uh, companies are and developers are very uh, uh, concerned about uh, potentially rolling out new AI products that uh, ultimately catch the wrong headlines. Uh, and so, of course, no one wants to see themselves caught in something like this. And uh, this is unfortunately what happens when there's a, a lack of uh, really powerful and reliable AI evaluation. And so, so that's exactly what we really focus on at Patronus, uh, where uh, we don't necessarily just help you be able to write your own evaluator functions uh, and, and just be able to observe and understand what's happening, but to really be able to put that into practice, especially into production. And that's where the keyword uh, automated uh, really comes in, uh, which is in the form of things like LLM judges and a very different kinds of automated techniques that make that possible. One of the very first things that we did at Patronus was to uh, actually develop the very first uh, LLM judge, which we actually supported through the Patronus API. Uh, and that's uh, something that not only we're very proud of, but also something that was uh, really useful for a lot of companies because they're able to uh, now systematically in production be able to uh, understand, uh, measure, uh, and ultimately uh, be able to take action on every single input and output uh, that is running through an LLM system. Uh, and so, uh, of course, uh, we've been able to, uh, in that process, train new LLM judge models, uh, a variety of uh, different kinds of uh, LLM judges, which we'll get into in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, and uh, of course, some of them we actually were able to open source, uh, which have uh, uh, in, in, in recent months become very popular across the community and also have been uh, state of the art in terms of how developers have uh, leveraged them uh, to to be able to to catch different kinds of failures and to of course uh, optimize against them in in real time as well. And so some of those examples of things uh, that we support in the form of LM judges uh, include uh, 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 different kinds of categories. Uh, I mentioned RAG earlier, but in, in addition to that, we have uh, judge evaluators that cover a variety of different kinds of dimensions uh, across things like company policies, regulatory policies, tone of voice, style, bias, uh, brand specific criteria. Uh, these are all things that you can uh, uh, effectively use uh, in many cases right off the shelf uh, through our product. Uh, and uh, these are uh, all LM judges that are specifically tuned to work uh, across these kinds of cases. But what's neat is that you can also of course uh, 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 make sure that they are even more specific and even more customized by actually uh, putting in information uh, relevant to your very specific use case. So you can actually, in natural language, define your own criteria so that you make sure that the judge evaluators work really well for your particular use case. Uh, and then of course, uh, on the final category here, there's a variety of different kinds of safety and security dimensions that we've published research around and that we support right out of the box in the form of LM judges uh, that uh, AI engineers are using to be able to uh, ultimately catch and prevent different kinds of more serious failures, uh, especially serious failures in production. And so uh, in that process, especially for the last several months, uh, uh, for, for some of the evaluation models that we trained, uh, we recognized that companies uh, wanted to be able to, uh, uh, especially use them uh, right off the shelf and to, to do that with, uh, without a lot of hassle, to do that within their own infrastructure. Uh, until these get started. And so that's when we decided it's, it's, it would actually be a great idea to actually open source some of the evaluation models that we trained. And so 
one of the examples of that was uh, what we call Lynx, uh, which uh, when we first announced it was uh, an 8 billion parameter model as well as a 70 billion parameter model. Uh, and uh, when we announced it uh, uh, last summer, uh, it actually outperformed uh, uh, all of the possible alternatives, including GPT-40 at the time. And so it was a state-of-the-art uh, model for RAG evaluation, in particular uh, for hallucination detection. Um, and what that really means here is uh, being able to measure whether or not outputs are actually grounded in context. Uh, and so you can see an example of what this actually looks like. Uh, and uh, it's specific to companies that are uh, dealing with some kind of context in some way. That context might be uh, pulled from a vector database. It just might be uh, context that's coming from some kind of data source that you uh, are using for a particular um, for a particular sample, for example. Um, and uh, what uh, Lynx actually does for you here is multiple things. So it actually, of course, gives you a score according to uh, uh, a measurement around whether or not the output was correct according to the context that was also passed in. Uh, but in addition to that, it actually gives you an explanation for why that was the case. Uh, and, uh, and, and in recent months, we've also been able to uh, incorporate additional details into this, where, for example, the scores fall into a confidence interval that we give you. Uh, along with that, you also get highlighted spans to really pinpoint where specifically in the output is the failure itself. And so you can imagine that uh, we've done a lot of work to be able to, uh, uh, to, to introduce a lot of uh, intelligent explainability into uh, the evaluation results that companies really see. And of course, uh, uh, given that these are different kinds of models, uh, they have, uh, of course, different kinds of accuracy and, and latency uh, 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 metrics and things like that. And so all of this is, of course, uh, available um, on Hugging Face, and so you should be able to, to try it out and, and really understand how, how well it might work for your very specific use case. Um, and so uh, what we've seen in that process uh, is uh, what companies really like to do is they want to really understand uh, how can they use something like this, not just for offline experimentation, but also to potentially use this to uh, evaluate and measure every single input and output. Uh, and in a scenario like that, they really want to make sure that the performance is uh, as great as it can be. And of course, in a scenario like this, you know, it's not just about cost and, uh, and latency, but it's also about how well does it perform against different kinds of alternatives and how well does it perform, uh, especially for uh, the domains uh, that I might care about in particular. Uh, and so we, we saw that across a variety of different kinds of, uh, of, of benchmarks, uh, 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 Lynx in particular outperformed uh, all variants of, of other uh, kinds of models uh, for, uh, for these kinds of tasks. And uh, what our takeaway from this was that uh, ultimately, uh, if you're using uh, an existing LLM uh, like GPT-40 to also evaluate GPT-40, that might work uh, in some cases in practice, uh, but we've noticed that it tends to not be as performant as uh, being able to use a model that was actually designed in nature to be really, really good at a particular evaluation task. And of course, uh, in addition to that, there are other concerns around cost and latency, maybe even data privacy uh, for closed source uh, models and things like that. But we've seen that uh, LM judges tend to be really good if they were uh, trained to be LM judges in the first place. Uh, and so, of course, uh, if you try out links uh, and you have any feedback, of course, let me know uh, or let anyone on the Patronus team know. Uh, what we've also seen is that uh, uh, there are certain tricks that you may have to implement in terms of how you use the models to make sure that it might work for your very specific uh, and niche use case. And so we're happy to, to, to have a conversation with you to help you make sure that you're actually using it in the right way uh, and uh, sort of not discarding it in case it doesn't uh, actually work the very first time you try it out. So one thing that you might notice here is that the very first benchmark um, uh, is, is Halo Eval, uh, but we also uh, actually uh, combined and, and sourced a variety of different kinds of benchmarks to create a new benchmark called Halo Bench. And Halo Bench uh, is a popular large-scale hallucination evaluation benchmark uh, that we also open sourced uh, as a part of the, the Lynx announcement last year. Uh, and so uh, it's a 15,000 sample uh, benchmark. It covers a variety of different categories, but what was really great about HaloBench in particular is that it actually focuses on uh, a, a lot of different kinds of practical use cases like medicine and finance and, and, and other kinds of domains uh, for, for, for QA tasks. Uh, and, um, and so we used, uh, for example, uh, Nomic uh, Atlas, uh, as well as uh, their new Atlas Analyst product to be able to help uh, visualize uh, a lot of our evaluation data, but especially useful for uh, really large-scale benchmarks like Hello Bench, uh, and so I would definitely recommend you checking out Nomic as well in terms of uh, if you're planning to use uh, any of our products. 
And so with, with Lynx, of course, I mentioned uh, it outperformed GPT-40 and, and other models uh, on the same kind of uh, hallucination evaluation task. Uh, and uh, it's great because both Lynx and HaloBench actually are very applicable to real world problems and not just academic benchmarks. Uh, we also noticed that in particular, Lynx was really good at catching really hard to detect hallucinations. Uh, and uh, this was in particular because of the way that we actually trained the model, which uh, actually used chain of thought reasoning data to help enable uh, uh, models like Lynx to really perform reasoning over advanced evaluation tasks. And so at the time we did it, uh, 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 training on a semantically perturbed data set like that was actually the very first time that, that was done, especially for a new evaluation and guardrail model. Uh, and so we're really uh, excited to be able to bring that uh, kind of uh, training approach to to that. And of course, we we published uh, a lot around how we uh, train this model. So you can check out the Lynx paper on archive to, to learn more as well. The next uh, thing that I thought I'd mention uh, is uh, uh, another uh, open source evaluation model that we uh, released uh, at the end of last year in December. Uh, and this was uh, actually uh, the leading small language model judge, SLM judge. And so this one is slightly different from Lynx in that it's not specifically focused on RAG use cases and not uh, hallucination detection, but it's focused on being a general purpose evaluator that is extremely small, extremely fast, and really good for use cases that uh, that want to be able to use uh, general purpose evaluation uh, pretty much on every input output. Uh, and so this is actually a 3.8 billion parameter model that we trained. Uh, and uh, we noticed that it actually outperformed GPT-40 mini on evaluation tasks. Uh, and uh, there's a, a number of different kinds of things that are really interesting about Glider in particular. Uh, I don't think we'll have a lot of time to go into all those details this time, but you can check out the Glider paper on archive as well. This is also, of course, available on Hugging Face, uh, really easy to use, you can use with a single GPU if you, if you needed to. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of uh, users now and engineers around the world that are using this to be able to uh, generally evaluate across whatever use case they have uh, on every single input output. So they're effectively using it as a small guardrail model that is really cheap and really fast to run. Uh, and what's also really neat about Glider in particular is that it's the first uh, explainable evaluation model that is specifically trained uh, with explanations in mind. Uh, and so uh, that means that it actually outputs things like reasoning chains and highlights fans um, all completely out of the box. And so you can use this, uh, you can try this out in Hugging Face and, and, and of course, again, reach out to us if you have any questions on this. Um, and so uh, you can go into some more details in terms of how this works in our paper, uh, but uh, we also similar to Lynx uh, benchmarked across very different kinds of popular benchmarks. Um, the one last thing I'd mention about benchmarks, since uh, uh, we at Paternus have a lot of uh, really strong opinions about especially open source benchmarks, is to always make sure that you use uh, things like live benchmarks, um, or especially benchmarks that have a close set, uh, just because we've seen that uh, a lot of companies have already trained on these benchmarks, uh, and so um, they've become saturated over time. And so the last thing I thought I'd mention is, uh, at the end of the day, what's really important about uh, LM judges, uh, and especially if you're using open source LM judges, is making sure that you really benchmark them against your own use cases. Uh, and this is a really key point that I thought I'd make, uh, uh, especially because we've seen that sometimes uh, companies will get started, but they don't really know how it works. They don't really know how to measure how well it does. They're not really sure where to go from there. And so if you have any questions at all around how to use LM judges, how to make sure it can work really well for your use case, um, or how to get going really quickly, uh, just feel free to reach out. Uh, you can ping us on, on LinkedIn or Twitter uh, or, uh, or reach out to us via email and uh, we'd always be happy to chat. Uh, 